Hey guys, it's me, Campus Trucker Sam, for another day of fun at our Arts for Lawrence summer camp. Today we're going to be making Alma Thomas field paintings. Now, although I said paintings, uh, you don't necessarily need to use your watercolors for this. So before we get started, let's go through what you will need, um, and then we'll go from there. So you're going to need a white piece of paper. I just took one of the plain printer papers from my folder. However, if you are new to joining us at camp this week, if you go behind the magazine or magazine's pages, there's a thicker paper called watercolor paper. Uh, and if you have more than one of those, you can use that as well instead of the regular uh, white paper. However, if you've been with us since day one, you might want to save this last watercolor paper for something we're going to do tomorrow that's going to require more water, uh, which means we need special paper. Um, and then either way, you can use our paints, paint brushes, and some water, not much. Um, you're going to need our little sponge bag, so it has some packing peanuts and a sponge in there that I told you to hold on to earlier in the summer, so we're finally going to use those. And then you also, if you don't want to use paint, um, or if you want to try to do combination and see which works better, you also need your marker. So before we get started, let's think, who's Alma Thomas? Alma Thomas was an Amer African-American expressionist uh, painter, and she was also a teacher, which I think is so cool. So she actually taught art, uh, and then eventually went on to pursue her own art in a more professional way, um, which uh, really led to some awesome success in our country uh, in the field of art. She really focused on abstract art. So what does that mean, abstract? Abstract is when something is created and it is not trying to look like it actually would in real life. So if someone was to take a picture of me like this and print it out just like so, that would not be abstract because that's actually what I looked like in that moment of time. However, yesterday or earlier this week, whenever you did our Picasso portraits, that was abstract because that's not what our, my picture would actually look like. My eye wouldn't be looking this way and one looking this way and my nose be down here and my ear be on my head. So abstract is where we take something and we make it look not like anything real. Um, so a little more fun stuff about Alma Thomas, uh, besides being really an abstract, she was actually the first graduate from the fine arts pro program at her college. She went on to Columbia University and uh, graduated with her master's, and she retired in 1960. Something I think is really cool, and I'm going to show you these pictures in a second, but her painting Resurrection was actually selected by Michelle Obama during Black History Month in 2015 to hang up in the old family dining room of the White House. So as you can see um, with the family dining around, that really bright painting in the background is Alma Thomas's. How cool is that? So what's what we're gonna be making today is one of her field paintings. She used color and color theory to create these abstract paintings that really draw attention uh, from the eye and uh, just really create a vibrant work um, to inspire others and just really enhance the life around us. So how do we do that? We're going to go ahead and now you can pick, you can either pick, use your sponge, you might have a couple sponges, you need to pick one of the edges um, that you think would work best. So this one's a little bit wider on this side, so I'm going to go with the smaller one, uh, but you can also use the packing peanuts as well, um, which are just like a small circle on each side. So that's up to you, um, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose the small end of my sponge. And then I'll start off by showing you how to do it with the paint. And then from there, I'll show you how to use the marker. Ideally, you would pick one and stick with it, um, but that's up to you. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use just a tiny bit of water. If you're uh, not new to our camp this summer, uh, there's been times where we used a lot of water to kind of blend the different paints on our paper, um, but we really are using the paints for color at this point. We're not using it um, as a backdrop or to blend anything. So I'm not using a, like hardly any water. And then I'm just gonna paint one side of my sponge. 
we kind of want to make it like a thicker paint versus the watercolor was typically watery. It might take a second like it is me to figure out um, just how much water you need. I hope I can show you this. So I just got enough there and I'm going to start in the middle. And I'm just going to press down and lightly pick it up. And I'm going to make a circular type pattern. Now again, I didn't even go back for more paint, but I started in the middle and I got a nice little pattern. Now I'm going to uh, pick a different color and do the same thing. So you might need to get some paper towel or something to kind of clean off. I'm just gonna use the scrap paper that I have to clean off my sponge and start with a different color. Get off my brush there. And then I went with orange first. Now I'm gonna go with blue, with light blue. Again, we're really trying to get that color. We're not using as much water as we did, for example, the finger paints, um, or excuse me, the fingerprint gardens. We used it, the watercolors as like a background, or even with our cave paintings, for those of you that were here last week, um, those were more the water part of watercolor. Let's think of it as we're using the watercolor, the color portion this week. All right, once I have that all done, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just going to go in the same style. Um, so I'm gonna go the same way all the way around. So I'm starting here and then I'm gonna circle around. That first circle I made. And I wanna make sure that I'm staying the same direction. So my shape has like a little pointy end and the pointy end is at the bottom right every print i make around in there and you're supposed to get them really close together i don't think i did a great job of that um, as you can see in her actual paintings um, okay so again i probably could have made these a little closer together but um we're learning that's what we're here for uh, I'm going to go ahead and rinse off that blue. Now, one of the cool things about Alma is that she used like really bright colors um, and a variety of colors to create that. So a lot of people think when they think of abstract, they don't necessarily think that it can be something so bright and cheery, but she brought this whole other dimension to it uh, with her color choices. And so again, we're, we're switching colors every time we go through, we're trying to keep them nice and bright. So I did um, orange and then that like turquoisey light blue. I'm gonna go with yellow. Now, again, we should probably, uh, these probably could have been closer together. I don't think, um, they're just gonna really like tightly put them in every time you stamp. Um, but I don't think there's anything wrong. We're using that uh, Alma Thomas's work as inspiration. So ours obviously isn't gonna look exactly the same and that's okay. That's what makes our art unique and special uh, every time. The more, the bigger uh, circle you get, the bigger circle you get, the um, more you're gonna have to stamp, so you're gonna have to keep reapplying. When I did my orange, I didn't need to reapply. When I did my blue, I only had to reapply a couple times, uh, but now I'm getting into the yellow, it's gonna take a little more. Yeah, try not to use too much water. Yellow is making it difficult to do that though. Uh, all right, almost there. Boop. 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 All right, so then you're gonna continue this throughout uh, until it gets to the very edge uh, and it'll be one awesome mosaic looking abstract piece of art and it's just a really warm way to brighten up a room and brighten someone's day while also just inspiring that creativity inside them so thanks all thomas for such a cool inspiration today and i look forward to all the rest of this week with all the different artists we're talking about as well so all right have a good one